Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be doing a full three-player playthrough of Dice Settlers. Now, I will be teaching the rules to this game as we're actually playing it, and what's going on here is you have each player starting the game with the same small set of dice, and they are going to simultaneously roll these, and then have a surprising amount of mitigation, which will let them re-roll dice as well as set dice to the specific face that they want. At that point, players are going to take turns taking actions, and there are a lot of different options they could do, including exploring new territory, settling territory, as well as raiding your neighbors, uh, recruiting new dice to build a bigger and more uh, uh, specialized die pool. Uh, you can also learn new technologies, harvest the land, and sell the goods that you got. So obviously there are a lot of different things that you can do while you're playing the game. And before we jump into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to support the creation of videos like this in the future, please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Now, one of those ways involves voting on games that get uh, made into playthroughs each month, and Dice Settlers is the game that won last month, which is the reason why the video is being made. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up for our three different players. Now, we're going to play the game from the perspective of the purple player over here, and you can see that each of us has one of these player mats, and we all have a bag with a starting set of these same dice. Now, these are going to go into our bags, and we also have some of these cubes, which are tents in the game, and the next thing to point out are these three hexagons in the middle of the table. As part of setup, each player chose one of these tiles to put out here in the middle. We can see that ours is right here with this purple tent on it. Uh, down below, this is going to say that we start the game with one wood resource, and we could add this green die into our bag. We can see that the red player will start with this yellow die in their bag, as well as a pumpkin resource. And lastly, we have the black player on this gray tile. Now, this down here says the bonus is only going to go to the player who is controlling this tile, and that is the person who has the most tents on that tile, or the person who has one of these houses. And I'll explain how those work soon. Now, uh, what this means is the black player does not start with extra dice or resources, but that symbol shows that their die quota goes up by one, so they are effectively going to roll one more die than the rest of us at the start of the game. Now, the last thing that I'd like to point out before we start the game are these nine technology cards. Now, I've sorted them by the number of research icons in the top left, and it is worth noting that the game comes with a ton of other uh, technology cards. Now, there are different kinds, as you can see from the backs, and you can go uh, randomly from within these subsets, or you can play the game with one of the predefined sets, and that's what I've done here. This one is called the Great Wild Somewhere, and I will explain how all of these work as we get to them in the game. All right, at this point, every player can now take all of their dice and put them into their bags. And now we can start playing the game. Now you'll see that we are the starting player with this token right here, but the first thing that happens is the roll phase, and that is simultaneous for all of the players. Now the way this works is we are all going to look to our quota boards, and we're going to pull that many dice out of our bag and roll them. Now we can see that the black player gets to roll four dice because uh, they have this tile right here, whereas we are only going to roll three as well as the red player. Now, as this is simultaneous, I'm only going to show the process of the rolling phase through the perspective of the purple player, which is what we are playing as, and then we'll just see what the red and black players have done at the end of that phase. So let's go ahead and draw three dice out of our bag, and it looks like we are going to have two greens and a white. And now that we have rolled them, there are a couple things that we can do. Now, the first thing is these pioneer symbols can be used. Uh, first of all, if you have two of them, they can be a wild symbol of your choice, as long as it is not a gold symbol. And as just a single pioneer symbol, you can see on your player aid, you can go ahead and set one of your dice or reroll up to three dice. Now, that means we could just use this immediately, putting it down onto our board and grab one of these two dice and put it to any face we want to. Now, another option that we have available to ourselves is this wood icon on this die. Now, again, on our player aid, you can see that you can spend a pumpkin, wood, metal, or gold to set one die or draw and roll two more dice. That means we could get rid of this die to set one of these two or get rid of this die to pull our other uh, two dice. Actually, we have three dice in our bag to pull two more out of our bag, and I think that's what we want to do. We started the game with one of these wood already, and it is worth noting that in order to pull more dice out of the bag, you must use a die with that face. We cannot use this uh, resource with the face that this is used for other things. So let's go ahead and use this one right here, and that will let us draw two more dice out of our bag, which is certainly nice. Obviously, rolling more dice is a good thing. We got two white ones. And it looks like we have just a bunch of these Pioneer hats. Now again, two of these could act as a single uh, die face of our choice, but I think what we should do is spend this one, which again will allow us to reroll up to three of our dice. 
I like the idea of this settle icon, and I'll explain why soon. So let's go ahead and re-roll both of these white dice right here, and now it looks like we got a second uh, settle icon and one of these pioneer hats. At this point, we could use this to change one of these to something else, and I think that we should do that. Now, the reason for that is because after the roll phase, we're all going to take two main actions, and uh, a single pioneer hat by itself does not make an action, and the uh, icons that are the same are going to constitute one action. So right now, we're just looking at a uh, two-value uh, settle action, so instead, I would rather spend this pioneer hat in order to set one of these, and we will take this one and put it over to the explore side. So now we're going to be able to do a one-value explore and a one-value settle. At this point, we can see that everybody has now finished out their roll phase, and the dice that we have used already have now gone down to the bottom of our board in the spent dice area. Now, it looks like neither of our opponents actually spent any dice to get the uh, results that they have, and now we are the starting player, so we get to take one action. Now, as I just mentioned before, we are going to take two actions total, and it's important to note that you cannot take the same action twice. So with our two die faces, we essentially get to do a single explore action, and then we also get to do a single settle action, and I think we should do the explore action first. So we will go ahead and put this down into our spent die area. Now the way this works is we are going to draw tiles from the top of this deck equal to the number of explore actions that we are doing. So in that case, we are just going to do one tile here, and then we are going to flip all of them over and choose just one of the tiles. Now obviously, since we only pulled one tile, this is going to be the one that we get to take, but if we had pulled multiple tiles, the other ones would go back into the box, they would not go back into the stack. That's important because if we go through this entire stack, then that is one of the several ways in which the end game will be triggered. Now in this case, we've pulled this tile right here, and that star shows that at the end of the game, the person who controls this tile will gain one victory point, and nobody else will get anything. Now down in the bottom, we can see this symbol matches up directly with the one that was on the tile that the black player started with, and that means the person who controls this tile will be able to increase their die quota by one. So we have to place this tile down, and if you are able to put it down such that it is touching two tiles, then you must. So we are not able to do this, and it must go down next to a tile that we uh, have presence in. Now presence means you simply have at least one uh, tent or you have a house down there. So we can put this either right here or right here. Now I think the thing that makes the most sense for us is probably to put it right over here. And that is because we are now far away from the black player who already has a die quota bump. Now what happens is we are going to come down here and grab one of our tents from the general supply, not from our personal supply. And we will put this on top of the tile. After this, we are now going to check to see if any of our opponents have presence in tiles that are adjacent to this new tile. In this case, we can see that red does have presence on this adjacent tile, and that means that the red player can take a tent from their personal supply, not from the general supply, and put it down onto this tile. And it looks like the red player does want to do that. So they will put this right over here, and once everybody else has had a chance to put a tent down on the spot, we have a chance to grab one of the tents from our personal supply right here, again, not from the general supply, and we can put that down here, essentially guaranteeing that we are in control of this spot. An easy way to remember this is the first tent put down onto an explored tile comes from the general supply, and all other tents are always going to come from your personal supply. So with that, we can now see that we are controlling this tile because we have more tents than our opponent, and that means we get to increase our dice quota by one. This means we will go from three to four. Next up, we have the red player, and for their first action, they have decided to do some research. Now we can see that they have a single lantern right here. Now this means that they could potentially research any of these top four technologies, but there are other restrictions on these cards. For stability, you can see this is going to increase the dice quota by one, which is a really nice ability, but it is going to require the use of one wood resource. That means you must actually have a wooden resource as a token in your area, and it looks like the red player has a pumpkin, not a wood, so they are not allowed to research this right here. Next up, we can see Scouts does not have a resource requirement that you have to spend, but it has a terrain requirement. Uh, so does forestry and uh, large coaches, in fact, and this just means you have to have presence in a territory of that color. Now, in this case, it looks like the red player does indeed have presence in a yellow territory, and because of that, they have decided to research scouts. For this, they're going to take their uh, token right here and put it down there, and you can see that victory point of one means they're going to get one uh, victory point at the end of the game. And now, as an ongoing ability for the red player, whenever they do an explore action, they can draw an extra tile. 
while we are here, I figure I should point out these other two. Uh, you can see forestry requires presence in a forest zone, and it says that uh, your settle icons can now act as recruit icons, and for large coaches, you have to have presence in forest and mountains, and it says that your pioneer hats can now act as settle icons. Okay, it's now time for Black to go, and it looks like they are going to be exploring just like we did, except they have two of these uh, icons, which means they will draw two tiles and choose one of them. The two they have to choose from are going to be these. Uh, this one is going to be worth three points at the end of the game for the person who controls it, and one point for the person who has uh, second place control, and then five points and two for that one. And down below, we have some new icons. This says that the person who settles this tile can immediately take another action. Normally, you can only take two actions per round, but this effectively gives a player a third action. And this one right here is a factory. Now, the way factories work is a player, once they have a tent on top of it, can, as a free action, remove a tent from a factory spot in order to take the reward. In this case, the player could take a single pumpkin resource and put it into their area. Now, when looking at both of these options, it looks like the black player decides they want to put this one down right here. That means that this tile will be discarded into the box. And then they've decided to put this tile right over here because, again, it has to be adjacent to a tile they have presence in, and it must go next to two tiles if possible. Once they slide that in right there, they're going to pull this tent from the general supply and put it down right on top. And now it looks like the red player does indeed have presence in an adjacent tile, so they can take a tent from their personal supply and put it down on top of here. And it looks like they have decided to do that. Now, one reason they're doing this is because if they didn't, then in the future, when the black player explored, if they explored right here, then obviously it would be adjacent to none of their opponents. So the red player likes the idea of coming over here so that they have the option in future turns of kind of leeching on explore actions from the black player, at least over here uh, anyway. Now, the black player can take one tent from their personal supply to put it on top of here, and they have decided they're going to do that. So that means they are now in control of this zone, and all that really means is they are vying better for the victory points on this card. Now, this bonus right here is only going to ever go to the person who explored that tile, so that means the black player can now immediately take another action. It looks like they have decided to do a recruit action. Now, they have just one die face for this, and if you look to your little player aid, it says if you have one, three, or six of these icons, then that means you can grab one, two, or three more dice. Now, those are going to go into your spent die area, and you are only allowed to grab dice that match the colors of regions that you have presence in. That means that the black player can grab either a green or a gray die, and it looks like they want to go with a gray die. Now, at this point, it's worth noting that we have this uh, pool of dice right here. This is going to be another one of our end game conditions. If we are ever in a situation where we only have two different colored dice left in this pool, then that's going to be one of our end game triggers. At this point, it has now come back to us, and we just have this one settle icon left. This means we should go ahead and do a settle action, and for every icon that you have, you can do one of three things. The first is you can take one tent from the general supply and put it into your personal supply. The next is you can take a tent from your personal supply and put it out either onto a tile where you already have presence or into a tile that is adjacent to your presence. Or you can take as many tents as you want from the territories and bring them back over here into your personal supply. Now in this case, I think we should probably put a tent out onto the board. And we now have a few different options for this. Now, we could come down here. Uh, we would then be tying the black player. And it's important to note that the control of tiles is friendly. So that means we would immediately increase our die quota, at least for as long as we were tied. The black player could, of course, on a future turn, use a settle action to put another cube down onto this spot. And that would allow them to regain control by themselves, and we would lose that die quota bump. Now, another thing to keep in mind is we could put this over here. Now, one reason we might want to do that is because of the other free action that we can always take, which is called governing. Now, this is how you put houses out onto the board, and you can only do this if you have three more tents than the next player with the most tents. Essentially, uh, if you have the most tents and you have three more than the person who has the second most. Now, if we put this uh, tent down here, you could see that we would have two more than our opponent, and so that's not quite enough. If we were able to put two down this turn, I might seriously consider this, because when you do a govern action, you get rid of all of the cubes on that tile that are yours, you put this house down, and you control that tile for the rest of the game. There can never be two houses on a tile, and if there is a house, then it's guaranteed control. So that's definitely something to keep in mind, but I think for this turn, let's just put this cube right down here. A friendly tie is pretty decent, and gaining one on the quota track is certainly something we like to see. 
So we will go from four up to five. It's now the red player's turn, and they're going to do a single settle action. And with this, they're going to take one of their tents from their personal supply, and they've decided to put it down right over here. That means they are now tying us on this tile, and since ties are friendly, they're going to go up once on the dice quota track. We can now move on to the black player, who will do the final action of the round. It is also going to be a single settle action, and in this case, they're going to take one of their cubes from their personal supply, and they're just going to put it right over here. That's in a spot that's adjacent to a tile that they had presence in, and even though there is no reason to really uh, try to control this tile because it's no victory points, they're just expanding their area of influence so that they can hopefully piggyback on other people's explore actions up here. So with that, Black is now done with that action, and in fact, everybody is done with the actions in this round, which means we can now go into the cleanup phase. In this phase, each player is allowed to keep up to one die in their uh, area up here and then put the rest of them into their spent die area. And this is one of the reasons why the red player wasn't too bothered by uh, keeping this around and not using it. So they will keep this right up here, but it looks like both of the other players used all of their dice. The next thing we can do is move the start player token over clockwise to the red player. And the last thing we would do is refresh any of our technology tokens over here. Some of these technologies are used once per overall round. And with that, we have now finished the cleanup phase. So we can go into the roll phase. And it looks like we are going to draw five dice out of our bag. Red is going to draw four. And black is going to draw four. Now, it is worth noting that red will draw four out of their bag. This does not count against their die quota. They will not roll this with the rest of their dice, but they can manipulate it if they'd like to with the uh, regular manipulations you get to do during the roll phase. So let's go ahead and draw five dice, but at the moment, we just have the one die in our bag. Now, if you ever need to draw dice out of your bag and you don't have enough, then that is going to be when you grab all of your dice from the spent area and you put them into your bag, and now we can keep drawing. So in this case, we need, it looks like, four more dice, and that'll be those three right there, and a single another one, it's going to be a white die, and let's go ahead and roll all of these. Well, right off the bat, we got two explore icons, and I do like the idea of exploring this round, and now we have this pumpkin, and this wood, and this pioneer hat. Now, I explained how you can use these uh, resource icons on the dice to uh, go ahead and set other dice, as well as draw more dice out of the bag. We only have one die in our bag at the moment, and it is worth noting that you're always allowed to look into your bag and see the contents of it. But another thing you can do with these resources is, as an action, you can simply uh, spend all of the dice of the different resource types and take those resources as tokens from the pool. So we can effectively, as one action, use both of these to take a single wood and a single pumpkin from this pool and put it into our area. Now, one of the reasons we want to have these tokens is because we can use them to gain technologies, but there is also a trade action that you can do, and it will turn these into a decent amount of victory points. Now, for the moment, we do already have this one wood in our area, and I think what we should probably do is use this one wood here to set another one of our dice to any face we want, and in that case, let's set this over to the research side. Now, that will get us one research, re research and we have one wood already, and that is going to allow us to go for the technology, which will increase our dice quota again, and it certainly is a good thing rolling lots of dice on your turn. At that point, I think we are done. We can go ahead and save this, and uh, we can use it in the next round, I think. So, yeah, I think we're done with the roll phase now. All right, we can now go into the action phase, and the red player is going to start that off. And it looks like they're going to begin with an explore. Now, they have two explore icons right here, but they also have this scout technology, which says every time they explore, they get to draw an extra tile. So that means they can spend these right here, and they're going to draw three tiles from the top of the stack, and then they are going to choose one to put out on the board. After considering their options, they have decided to discard these two right here, and they're going to put this one down right over there. Now, they're going to pull one tent from their general supply and put it down on top. And the moment that happens, they, as a bonus, get to grab one wood from the supply and put it into their area. Next up, the black player can take one of their tents from their personal supply and put it on top of this because they have presence currently in an adjacent tile. And they decide they're going to do that. Uh, remember, you can always spend one of your uh, settle actions to pull back as many tents as you like. And they like the idea of expanding out so that they are going to be adjacent to what looks like any possible explore action later on in the round. So they can keep piggybacking on other people's explore actions, even though this isn't a particularly strong place to go. Since an opponent put a tent down, that means the red player can take one of their tents from their personal supply and put it down on top, but they've decided they don't really care about doing that right now. They'd rather save these for something else in the future. Next up, it is the black player's turn, and they're going to do a single settle action. 
So they're going to grab one tile from the top of the stack, and it looks like it is this mountain range one. It will give three points to the player who controls this tile at the end of the game, and the person who explores it will gain one metal. And now the black player can put this down, it looks like, either here, here, there, there, there. They have lots of different places to put this down. And they've decided they're going to put it over here. Now once that goes down, they can take one tenth from their general supply and put it on top. This also means that they're going to grab one metal token from the supply. And now we can see that we have presence in adjacent regions. So we could spend one of our tents from our personal supply and put it down on top of that. But I don't think we necessarily care to. Uh, second place gives zero points on that tile, so I think we'd rather hold on to these to do something else with them. All right, it's now our turn, and it looks like we are going to be exploring as well. Just a lot of exploring happening at the start of the second round. Uh, we are going to draw two tiles for this action. So let's see what those options are. Uh, we've got this one right here, which will increase dice quota by one more, and this one right here is a factory. So again, a factory is a spot where you can pull off a tent to activate its uh, action, and this one actually lets you pull off a tent to bring two more tents from the general supply into your personal supply. And I think right now we're pretty good on our dice quota with our plans. So let's go ahead and discard this, and then we have to put this down next to a region that we have presence, and that is also, of course, adjacent to two different tiles. Well, I don't think we want to put it down over here or even over here because that means both of our opponents would have adjacency and both of them could jump on top of this. And this is a pretty good activation. Eff effectively, you can put one tent down to pull it off and gain two tents later. Uh, we'd love for none of our opponents to be able to piggyback on this, but I think let's just go ahead and put it right over here for now. So we can take one tent from our general supply and put it down on top, and we can see that the black player is adjacent, and they're going to take one of their tents from the personal supply and put it here as well. So I figure let's go ahead and take one from our personal supply and put this down here. Again, you can only put the second one down if one of your opponents put one of these down there. So you always have the option of being in control of a new tile that you explore, of course, as long as you have enough of these uh, tents in your personal supply. Now that we have put this down as a free action, we could immediately use this, but I think we will hold off until uh, later so that we can pull these tents off to pull even more tents into our personal supply. It's now time for Red to take their second action of the round, and they are going to do a research action, and it looks like they're going to spend this wood along with it in order to research stability. Now again, it has no terrain requirements, but they do have to spend one wood, and this is likely the reason that they decided to put this tile down to gain that wood as a bonus. Now when they put this token down, the uh, thing they're going to gain is plus one to their dice quota for the rest of the game, because there's no way to lose technologies, and we can see it's worth zero points at the end of the game. So they'll go from four to five. It's now time for Black to go, and it looks like they're going to do a double settle action, and they're going to be pretty simple here. They're just going to grab two tents from the general supply and put them into their personal supply. All right, we can now take our second action of the round, and let's go ahead and do some research. Now, my original plan was to use this one research and a wood to get this stability technology, which would increase our dice quota once again. Now, that would put us up to six, and we currently actually only roll six dice, and since we're going to be saving this one Pioneer hat, we only have the opportunity to roll five next round anyway. So I think maybe instead, let's keep this wood for now, and let's use this research over here for large coaches. Now, we can see that the requirements say we have to have presence in forests and mountains. And when we come back to the territories, we can see that we do indeed have that. So let's put a technology token down right here, and that's going to be worth two points at the end of the game. And for the rest of the game, we could use our pioneer hats as settle actions. So it's not that big of a deal just having these lying around. And in fact, settle actions are very important because it's one way that we can just expand our control and uh, presence out on the territories. Okay, the action round is now done, so we can now do cleanup. Uh, everybody can hold up to one die in front of themselves, and it looks like the green player has both of these as options. And they have decided, it looks like they're going to keep this one right here and discard this one to their spent die pool. Now we can go ahead and move the starting player token over here. And it's time to go into the third round of the game. And everybody can do their roll phase. It looks like we get to pull out five dice. Red gets to pull out five. And black will pull out four. At the moment, it looks like we have just one die in our bag. So we can now pull four more out but we are going to put these four in. So effectively, we can put these in and pull all of them out. So we are going to have all of our dice available to us this round. 
And uh, right off the bat, we got another couple of explorers, and we got a couple of settles, which I do like seeing, because we have this pioneer hat, which now can act as a uh, settle icon because of our large coaches technology. In fact, we might just be good right here. <laughs> we might just uh, explore and settle. Uh, I do like the idea of gaining more dice. I mean, obviously, uh, getting some more dice into our uh, pool will not only increase uh, the number of, well, the different types of actions that we can do, but also it makes getting uh, more quota a better thing. Now, at this point, it's probably worth noting, and you've probably seen it already, uh, this top right part of our player aid shows us all of the different die faces for all of the different dice. And some of these are more specialized on gaining resources. Uh, some of them are more specialized on things like settling. So we can kind of customize how we're going to be playing the game based off of the dice that we grab. It is also worth noting that at the end of the game, every two dice that you have is worth three points. So gaining dice is certainly a good thing. All right, it's time for the black player to take the first action of the round, and they have decided to do a single raid action. Now, we haven't seen the raid icon yet, and if you look over here, you'll see that it shows up twice on the gray dice and once on the orange dice. So with this, they can now do a raid out on the board, and the way this works is they have to target one hex where they have presence and where their opponents have presence. And for every one of these raid symbols, they are going to remove one of the opponent's tents, and then they're going to put one of their tents in from their personal supply. Now, you can only target one opponent with this, and it looks like they're going to target this hex here. So that means that this raid icon will get rid of this red tent, and that tent is going to go back to the personal supply of the red player so they can easily deploy it again. And then the raid icon will also put another tent out into this area. Now with that, we can see that they have three tents here, and the second most tent on this tile is zero. So as a free action, they have decided to do a governance. Now for this, as I mentioned before, they can bring out one of their houses, and they will put it down on top of that tile, and all of the tents of their color will go back to their general supply. Now, this is important because they have now locked it down the control of this tile, which means they've effectively locked in three points at the end of the game. But every house is also going to be worth bonus points at the end of the game, and it is squared. So if you have just one house, then that's one times one or one point. But you can see that there are five houses total. So if you have all five of your houses out, that's five times five or 25 points. So you are definitely incentivized to keep putting houses out. It's also worth noting that this is another one of the end game triggers. If any person gets all five of their houses out, that's going to trigger the end of the game and players will play one round after that. It is also worth noting that down here in the expensive technology areas, one of them is Builder. It costs three of the research symbols and one wood, but it says that every one of your houses will be worth two more points, and it's worth four points just straight up for having this one. So if a player is able to get a lot of houses out, then getting this builder technology is certainly something they're probably going to want to push for. Uh, Prosperity is the uh, hardest one to grab. You can see it's four of these uh, research, and it costs a gold bar, which is not an easy thing to come by. And it says that at the end of the game, every single one of the dice that you have is worth an additional point, and it gives five points. So these are definitely things that we should all keep in mind. All right, it's time for us to take our first action of the round, and I figure let's go exploring again. We have two of these symbols, so we can draw two tiles. And it looks like our options are going to be this mountain range, which will give us another action. Ooh, that is definitely tempting. And the other one is going to be this uh, kind of forest area. And as a factory, that lets you get another action when you pull a uh, tent off of that. Well, uh, obviously gaining extra actions is the name of the game this round for us. Uh, this one would give us an extra action immediately, and we do have this one recruit um, action in front of ourselves. So doing a third action this round would be nice because we'd be able to grab another die. But then again, if we did this one right here, we would put one or potentially two tents down on it so that in the future we could get one or two extra actions um, when we really need it as opposed to right in this moment. And I guess we could use one of them right now. With that in mind, though, if we put this down into a spot, it would also give a third action to one of our opponents if they were able to uh, put one of their tents down because of adjacencies. So it's definitely not straightforward as far as which one I should go with. I think since we do have a decent third action this round already lined up, let's just do this one so that we don't give uh, nice bonuses to our opponents to let them do multiple actions. Now we have to put this down next to a tile that we already have presence in, and I figure we'll go right over here. Once we place that, we can grab one of the tents from our general supply and put it down on top of it, and we can, of course, discard this tile. The black player does have presence in regions that are adjacent to this new tile, but they only have two tents in their supply, and they've decided to keep these for something else. So that means they're not going to put one down, and now as a bonus for exploring this, we can take another action. 
Well, we currently have these two subtle icons in our area and we have two tenths in our personal supply. So let's go ahead and do a double subtle action and let's do something similar to the black player. Uh, let's put both of these down onto this new tile that we just put here and let's do a governance of our own. We can go ahead and get rid of all three of these uh, tents because we have three more than the second place player, which is zero. And we can now put our first house down. This means that we have locked in these three victory points at the end of the game. And it is worth noting that some of these tiles have a lot more victory points than three on them. They go all the way up to like seven and nine. But it is also worth getting these houses down early because investing in the early ones makes the later ones worth even more points at the end of the game. And uh, grabbing moments where uh, taking a governance is easy is probably something that's worthwhile for us to do. All right, we're now done with our bonus action. So now the red player can take their turn. It looks like they want to do a double settle action, and they're going to take two tents from their personal supply, and they will put the first one down right here because it is adjacent to a tile where they have presence. And now they are tied just like the rest of us for control of this tile, and the bonus for control says you get to go up once on your dice quota. So this will go up right here to six, and then they're going to put this one down onto this tile over here where the factory action lets you pull it off to gain more tents. Now it is uh, worth noting that you can only do the uh, factory activation on each tile once per overall round. So while we do have two of these tents on here, uh, we cannot immediately pull them both off to grab four tents from our general supply into our personal supply. These dice will now go into the spent dice area and red is now done with their turn, which means that black can now take their second action and that is gonna be a double settle action uh, as well. Uh, but it looks like before they do that, they are going to do this factory free action. That's going to take this uh, tent back into their personal supply, and then they get to grab two tents from the general supply into their personal supply, so they now have five tents in their personal supply. Now with that, they're going to grab two of these, and they're going to place those out with these settle actions, and it looks like they're going to take another governance because, well, they can put them both down right here, and they now have three to um, everybody else's zero. So as a free action, they will pull these back, and put their second house on the board. So now since they have two, they are scoring four points, uh, which is two times two at the end of the game. But that's only going to go up as they get more of these houses down. And this tile right here does give three points to the person who controls it at the end of the game. We can now take our second action of the round, and it will be a single recruit. This means we get to grab one new die, but it has to be associated with a region where we have presence. Well, we are currently in the orange, gray, and green regions, so we can grab one of these. And I think we probably want to grab the orange die. It has a few good things going on. The first is gold bars. Now, gold is important because once you have harvested this, it acts as any of the other resources if you want, and gold is certainly not an easy thing to grab. Uh, another thing to consider is we have this handshake symbol. Now this is the trade action and we have not done this just yet in the game and this allows players to get rid of their resources as well as potentially their dice to generate victory points and the victory points come in these tokens right here. Now this is the last way that the end game trigger can happen. If all of these points go away then that will trigger the end game and we'll play one more round. Now the other reason I think we should grab the orange die is because it does have a raid icon and obviously raiding can be really important for the process of building houses but it also has two of these pioneer hats and for our large coaches technology that means our pioneer hats also count as settle icons and settling is really important. So that is the long-winded reason why I think we should grab this die right here and put it into our spent die area. Speaking of recruiting, it looks like that's what the red player is going to do as well. They have these two recruit icons, and then they're going to use these two pioneer hats as a wild die face for a third recruit icon. Now, this is important because if you want to grab two dice, you need three of these icons. And if you want to grab three dice, you are going to need six of these icons, which obviously no one is even close to doing just yet. So by getting to these three, that is going to allow the red player to grab two more dice. After considering their options, they've decided to go with one yellow die and one gray die. Uh, they could have both been the same if they wanted to, but they wanted to diversify just a little bit. It looks like they're the only ones who currently have presence on yellow terrain, and the yellow dice are the only ones with this research symbol. So maybe the red player is trying to do a little bit more research. And then obviously there are a couple of raid icons on the uh, gray dice, and the red player has no houses out yet. So it looks like they might be looking to kick out some tents in the near future. All right, the action phase is now done, so everybody can keep up to one die in their area. It looks like black will keep this one right here, and we will also keep this pioneer icon. And then we can move the start player uh, token over to us, and let's go into the roll phase. It looks like we're going to roll five dice, uh, red is going to roll six, and black is still rolling four. 
So let's grab our five, but currently our bag is empty. So that means we have to take all of these, and it looks like we have six here, so one of these dice will not be rolled by us this round. And that one is going to be, it looks like our orange. Dang it, it got left over there in the bag. It's not the one I wanted to have happen at all. But either way, we'll roll that in the next round, or maybe we will get one of the uh, uh, resource icons in order to pull that orange one out. Well, it doesn't look like that happened, but instead we can have just a monster settle action. We've got these three fires here, and we have two of these pioneer hats, which can both act as the settle action. So I think let's not reroll anything. Uh, we're going to do a single recruit action, and then do a five settle action, which I think is going to be a really good action for us. Okay, it looks like both of our opponents are done with the roll phase, so now we can go into the action phase, and we are going to start things out. Now the first thing we should do, I think, is our five strong settle action. But even before that, let's pull this tent off right here to activate this factory. That is going to put this tent into our personal pool, and then we get to pull two more tents from our general pool into the personal supply. And now we have these five actions available to ourselves. I think let's start off by using this one right here uh, with the large coaches technology to have a subtle action. And let's put this onto that location. Uh, we know that black is always going to control this, but the second place player will get one point, so that's not bad. Then we can use this one, I think, to put this down over here. Now with that, I believe we have good coverage for all of the terrain. I don't think there's any spot that a player could put a new uh, tile down that we would not have the option of jumping in on. With that in mind, I think we should maybe just go ahead and use all three of these to pull three more tents out from the general uh, supply into our personal supply so that we are nice and prepared for future actions. So these are all gone now. And now it's time for the red player to go. Now it looks like they're going to start off with the first harvest action of the game. I talked about this earlier, but the way it works is you take all of the die faces that show the different resources, and for one action, you can gain those resources into your area. So this means they are going to gain two pumpkins, and they are also going to grab one wood. And then these dice will go into the spent area. Next up we have the black player, and it looks like they are going to do an explore action, and they can pull out three tiles. It appears that our options are going to be this forest right here, which doesn't have any bonuses, but it is worth seven points to the person who controls it at the end of the game, and three points for second place. We have this one right here. Uh, now this is, I believe, the first of the brown tiles that we've seen in the game. Now this offers one point for the person who controls it at the end of the game, and then down here we can see that the person who controls this effectively has plus one settle action whenever they do a settle action in the future. And the last of these tiles is this mountain one. It's four points for the controller at the end of the game and two points for second place. And the factory allows you to create gold. Well, all of these tiles are pretty tempting to the black player, but they have decided they want to give this one a shot. Uh, one of the reasons for that is we can see they are going to be recruiting this round, and so they're hoping to grab one of those brown dice, and you have to have presence down onto a uh, brown tile in order to make that happen. So that means both of these tiles will go into the box, and it looks like I think the only place they can put this down legally where it does not, uh, it's not adjacent to two of their opponents is right over here. Uh, I think everywhere else, the red player and us are also there. So they will put this here, they will pull a tent out from their general supply, and we are adjacent, so we could jump onto this if we wanted to. And we do have four of these tents in our uh, personal supply, so I figure let's go for it. Um, we uh, currently are tying, so that's going to gain us plus one settle action. But we can now see that the black player is going to immediately put another one down onto this spot. Um, they can do that because we jumped into that location as well. But this continues to let us kind of work our way out. All right, we can now take our second action of the round. And we are also recruiting. And this is, I think, another reason why we wanted to put our tent down onto the spot. I think let's go ahead and pick up one of those brown dice. Now, they are covered in the resource symbols. They have the uh, um, gold there. They do also have one research symbol. I think earlier I said yellow is the only one with it. Brown does have one as well. But uh, with these in conjunction with some of the other dice we have, we could do some really nice um, uh, harvesting and then use those to trade in to get a bunch of points. So we'll add this into our spent area along with this. And now the red player can take their second action, and it's going to be a research one. For this, they have decided to go and research large coaches just like we did. Uh, they do have presence in forest and mountain areas, and it looks like they have three research out on the board at this point. 
Next up, we have the black player who can take their second action of the round, and with just a single recruit um, icon, they can take one new die, and they're going to grab a brown one because they now have presence on this brown area, and these can now both go into their spent zone. All right, the action phase is now done, so we can do cleanup. It looks like the red player can hold on to this die and nobody else will be. So now the starting player marker can move and we can go into the next roll phase. It looks like the quotas have not changed. We are rolling five new dice. Uh, red will roll six new dice and black will roll four. All right, we can now go into our bag and we just have this one orange die left over. So we do need four more dice. And that means we can pull all of these from our spent area. And then we can pull four more. So it looks like that is going to be a brown. Then we will have a white. We will also have, <laughs> looks like a yellow. And lastly, we have another white. All right, let's go ahead and roll these. And that is a pretty interesting roll. We got three resources right here, so we could do one harvest. And we got a couple settle icons, which are certainly nice to have. Now at the moment, it feels like, oh, I guess we could look as well. We know we have three dice left here in our bag. So we could potentially maybe spend this wood or this pumpkin in order to pull two more of these out and roll them. That might make a stronger action over here, but I don't know. I feel like maybe we'll just stick with this. Grabbing these resources is going to be a good thing that we can then trade in the future. And this is a pretty decent roll. So yeah, we'll go with this and not manipulate anything. And now that both of our opponents are done with the roll phase, we can go into the action phase and red gets to start. Now they have one, two, three, four, five different icons face up in front of themselves. It looks like they didn't roll any pioneer hats or any resources. So they didn't get to modify their roll at all. And it looks like they are interested in just using this single explorer. But if you remember, they do have scouts. So they always get to draw one extra tile. So that means they will use this and draw two tiles from the top and they'll get to explore one of these down. Now this one right here, ooh, that's pretty good for them. Uh, it gives a bonus action when you play it down, and they have so many different action options. Uh, that is going to be pretty attractive. It's also three points to the controller at the end of the game. Uh, and this one over here has a factory where you can make wood, and it is six points for the person who controls that tile at the end of the game. But it looks like the yellow player, uh, sorry, the red player does like the idea of this yellow tile. So they're going to put this one down and discard this other one to the box. And then it seems they want to put it over here to kind of increase their uh, territory over into this spot where it looks like uh, they don't have much hold. Now they will slide this in to that spot there. They are adjacent to a spot where they have presence. They can then put a tent down from their ge um, general supply. And we can now go, I think we go in player order. So the black player can now jump in here if they wanted to. And they have decided to pass. And then we can. And we do have three of these tents, but I think we're going to pass on that as well. So the red player uh, is now just here by themselves, and they get to take a bonus action. And it looks like that is going to be a trade. Now they just have one of these, and we haven't done any trade actions yet. Our player board shows the different options right here. For every trade action, there are four different things that you can do. The first is you can discard a matching set of three different resources, and gold is wild, in order to gain six victory points. The second thing is you can discard three different types of resources to gain five points. The third is you could discard any two resource tokens to gain two victory points. And lastly, you can remove one of your dice from the game in order to gain three points. Now, you remember, every two dice are worth three points at the end of the game anyway. So it looks like they are going to use this to do the top option. And that is going to get rid of these three identical resources, all three of them being pumpkins. And that is going to generate six points for them, which they can grab from this bowl right here. Okay, the black player can now take their first turn, and it looks like they're going to harvest, and this is going to grab them one gold and one metal. Okay, we can now take our first action of the round, and I think we are also going to harvest. Now this is going to make us a pumpkin, a wood, and a gold, and we can now grab these from the supply. All right, red can now take their second action, and they still have all three of these options. And while it does seem good for them to use these two research icons right here, they've decided instead just to do one recruit action to bring another die into their area. And they're just going to grab an orange one. We can see right at the top of the screen, they do have presence in the orange area. So they're going to add this into their spent dice area. Black can now take their second action, and it is going to be their first research action of the game. And it looks like they would like to invest in stability. So they can put this token down right here, but they do have to spend one wood. Now they don't have any wood at the moment, but gold is a wild resource and they do have one of these. So they can now discard this and it looks like they have now increased their dice quota by one. Which means they can now roll five. 
Okay, it's time for us to take our second action of the round, and we do have these two settle icons, and we have three of these tents here. Now, one thing that we could do is put one of these down onto this tile so that we are tying the black player, so that in the future we have one extra settle icon when we do these settle actions. And in fact, we could put both of these down right here and take control from the black player entirely. But I think what we should do is put one of these down, uh, so we are now tying with black, so both of us gain this benefit. And then let's put another one of these down over onto this spot. Now, this seems uh, a little mean, I guess. I mean, the location only gives one victory point at the end of the game. But the red player has been rolling six dice for a while now. So by doing this, we are now once again in the lead. And these are both spent, of course. But this is going to cause the red player's uh, dice rolling quota to go down by one because they are no longer tied for first. So that brings them down to five, and in fact, all of us are at five at this point. Uh, now we've finished up all of our actions, so we can now go into the cleanup phase. And the red player decides they're going to keep this one settle action and discard both of these research uh, dice right here. They just had too many options that last round, and you only ever get to do the two uh, base actions, plus, I guess, the occasional bonus action here or there. So these go down here, and we can now pass the starting player marker over to the black player, and let's go into the next roll phase, and it looks like everybody gets to pull out five dice. First things first, let's see what we have in our bag. It is two greens and a white. We now need two more dice, so we can add the rest of these back into our bag, and then pull two more out, and it's a white and a yellow. Well, it looks like we have one Explorer, we've got a Wood, a couple of these Settles, and a Pioneer, which can be used to reroll some, uh, and it can also be used as a Settle. Now, at this point, I feel like maybe we should use this Wood to pull two more dice out of our bag. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll spend the Wood, and then pull two more out, and it looks like it's a White and a Brown. And it looks like that was pretty good for us. We picked up another one of these Explorers, and the Brown die rolled as a trade. Now with that in mind, I feel like I feel like maybe this round we should do a trade action and an explore action uh, instead of doing some of the settling. So let's go ahead and use this pioneer hat to set a die to the face of our choice. And that means we can take this green and turn that over onto a trade side. So now we can do a double trade and we can do a double explore. And we can just hold on to this for the next round and next round we can maybe do a lot more of the settling. All right, it looks like all of the rolling is done, so we can now go into the action phase, and the black player is going to start things off pretty simply. They're just going to harvest, and it looks like that's going to be two pumpkins and a metal. Okay, we are next up, and we have to take one action, and I am regretting how we did our roll phase. Uh, we had this as a settle, I believe, and we turned it into a trade, and I now realize we don't have that many great trades, but we're going to stick with that decision and uh, just roll with it. Now let's go ahead and start with our double trade here. Now the first of these trades, oops, <laughs> that one is going to allow us to get rid of three of the same resource, so we'll get rid of these two wood and this gold as a wild resource, and that is going to get us six victory points. And with this second trade, I figure let's go ahead and permanently remove one of our white dice from our pool, uh, and that is going to generate three victory points as well. So by getting rid of all of this stuff, we are now going to make nine victory points. Next up, we have the red player, and they're just going to harvest two pumpkins. Black now gets to go again, and they're just going to do a single exploration action, which means they get whatever this tile is, and it is going to be a brown tile. We can see it's worth four points at the end of the game for the person who controls it, and three points for second place. And it's a factory that lets you produce brown dice. So that is a pretty interesting thing that you can do there. And it looks like the black player has decided they want to keep putting it right over here. Um, again, I think every other legal place for them would be adjacent to both of their opponents. So they're going to put this right over here. Uh, that is definitely helping us by having the black player keep doing that. And now they're going to pull one tent from their general supply and put it on the tile. And now we do have one of these tents in our personal supply, and I think let's go ahead and jump on that spot as well. Uh, this could be a decent amount of points, and it's also uh, something we could pull off in order to generate another brown die, which can make quite a bit of resources. So with that, the black player now has the option of putting another tent down from their personal supply, and they have decided to do that. Okay, we now get to go again, and let's go ahead and use both of these explorers to pull two tiles and choose one of them. But maybe before we actually look at these two tiles here, let's activate this factory as a free action. That will pull this tent into our personal supply, and we didn't have any in our personal supply until we did that. And then the activation will pull two more tents into our personal area. 
So now let's take a look at these two tiles. And ooh, this one is nine points to the person who controls it at the end of the game and five points to the second place player. Five points is one of the biggest numbers we've seen for all of the tiles already, and that's just second place. Now, the other one allows you to produce gold, and gold is a wild resource, which is also nice, but I think this is the one we want to put down. Now, when it comes to placing it onto the board, I think we should put it over here. Uh, this is one of the few locations that the black player cannot uh, jump in on right now, and it is adjacent to red, I suppose, but at the end of the day, we have to pick one of our opponents to help, and the red player has no houses yet, and the black player has two of them. So we can slide this right over here, and then we will add one of our tents from our general supply onto this tile. Uh, we ask the red player if they want to join in, and they definitely do. <laughs> They're going to pull this one from their personal supply, and that means we can take another one from our personal supply. So we are now in the lead on this tile, and both of us, I think, are pretty happy about it. Although we do have to make sure to try and maintain the lead. If anything, maybe we should try to use a raid action or a lot of settling on the next action to get a house down on the spot, because nine points is a lot that we want to lock in. Okay, Red can now take the final action of the round, and it's going to be a double settle, and it looks like they currently have no tents in their personal supply. Uh, they could do a free action to pull this one back, and then no one would be on this tile at all, but right now that single cube is essentially claiming five victory points, uh, although that definitely might change by the end of the game. So they've decided to keep this simple. They're just going to pull two tents from their general supply and put them into their personal supply for these two settle actions, and now they're done. This means that we can now do the cleanup phase. It looks like all of us have a single die left over, so we can save those. And then the starting player marker is going to move over. And now it appears that everybody is still rolling five dice. So let's go into the roll phase. So let's start off by seeing what's in our bag. And it's just this orange die. We now need four more dice, so we can put all five of these in here. And then it looks like we were going to have a brown, two white, and a green. So let's see what we get. Well, we have some pretty nice options going on here. First of all, we got a gold bar, and this trade icon I don't think we need right now. But instead, uh, well, we could use this pioneer as another one of these settles. But we also know we have currently a settle coming in from the control bonus of one of the tiles out on the board. So let's go ahead and use this to set one of our other dice, and that's going to be this brown die, and we'll put that over to the gold side as well. Uh, that way this round we can do settling and we can harvest a couple gold and that gold can then be used to trade in a future round. Uh, we already have one pumpkin so two gold plus a pumpkin would be three of the same kind and that would work out really well on a future turn. So let's stick with this. All right, all of the rolling is now done, so we can go into the action phase, and we get to be the first ones to do that. And I figure let's start out simple. Uh, actually, maybe we should do this settle action first. We can see that the black player will be settling, and if they put even one more tent onto the spot, then we would lose access to that uh, free settle action, essentially, because we are both tied for control. So we will do a settle action, and we'll do one, two, three of them. Now, we currently have two tents in our supply, so I figure we should put two of them down right on here so that we now have three more than our opponent with the second most. And then with our third subtle action, let's just pull another uh, tent from the general supply into our personal supply. Now, I do like the idea of going on to here with a tent so that we could use this later on to pull out uh, more of the tents from the general supply, but I like the idea of locking this down this turn even more. So after we have done that, we can now do a free action, which is the governor action. We can now pull all of these off and they will go to the general supply and this will put our second house down onto the board and we have permanently claimed the nine victory points at the end of the game for controlling this tile and I think the red player isn't probably too upset about that. They are still in a pretty good position to try and get these five points although the black player might try to come in here by the end of the game in order to at least share or steal that from them. Either way we are now done with our turn. So the red player can now go, and it looks like they are going to settle as well, and they have the large coach's technology, so that means both of these hats can act as a uh, settle action, so they effectively have three settle actions to play with. Now they currently have two tents in their supply, so with the first of those settle actions, they're going to bring in another tent into their personal supply, and with the last two, they're going to put both of these down right here. Now this goes back to their personal supply, and as a free action, they're going to go ahead and put down their first house because they had three tents, and that is three more than the next player, which had zero in that case. It's now the black player's turn, but the first thing they want to do is activate this factory, and that is going to remove this tent back to their personal supply, and it looks like that is also going to generate one brown die for them. 
Next up, they are going to do a settle action, and they have three of these over here, plus they also gain one there, because they are currently tied for governing this tile, and everybody that's tied gains this bonus. So with four of these actions, they're going to start off by putting one down into this zone, because it's adjacent, and then they're going to put a second one there as well. And then for the third and fourth actions, they will pull one tent each from the general supply and put it into their personal supply. All right, we are now up again, and we can take a simple action here. We are just going to harvest two gold, so we can take those from the supply and add them into our personal area. Moving on, the red player can now go, and they have decided to activate this factory right here. Uh, they can kind of see the writing on the wall. They can tell that the black player has a single raid icon, and the black player did just put two tents in this area. So if they were to raid this, then not only would the red player not gain the access to this uh, factory activation, but the, blue, uh, the black player would then be able to put a, another one of their houses down. So red is going to preempt that and pull this off to activate the factory. That is going to pull two more tents from their general supply into their personal. And then they're going to use both of these research icons to learn a technology. It looks like the one they've settled on is general education. It's going to cost them a pumpkin and a wood, but we can also see that's going to get them four victory points at the end of the game. And now once per round, they can gain one extra research icon. This is certainly going to make it easier for them to get to these much more expensive uh, uh, technologies that can give a ton of victory points at the end of the game. It's now time for Black to take the final action of the round, and they are kicking themselves. They really wish they'd used this Pioneer hat to turn this raid icon into maybe an explorer or something like that, because they were hoping to raid the spot and place a house down there, but now that is not going to be an action, at least option for them this round, because there has to be an opponent to actually raid. Now, uh, at this point, they figure they may as well do this raid action. They just have to choose one of the tiles where they have presence and kick out somebody to put another one in. And it looks like they're going to choose this one up here. So uh, that means we are going to get kicked out. And we did not see that coming. And that's unfortunate because we could have activated this to pull off, uh, and pull it off and grab one of the brown dice. But uh, we didn't see this coming. So that means the black player can now take one of their tents from the personal supply and put it down over there. It isn't really the turn they were hoping to do, but they're trying to salvage it. Okay, the action round is now done, so we can go into cleanup. It looks like everybody has a single die that they can save, and that means we can now move the starting player over, and it looks like the quotas have not changed in a little while. We are all rolling five dice again. So let's pull five new dice out, and it looks like we have a green die here, and now we can take all four of these, and it looks like one of them will not be used this round. Maybe we should think about gaining some more dice, but I guess uh, let's just see what our options are. Well, we didn't get any more of the recruit actions, but we did get three of these resources, and we currently have two gold bars as well as this pumpkin right here. Now, we also got two explorers, and explore is a nice way for us to try and uh, uh, lay claim to some of those really high victory point tiles that are in the stack. I think maybe we shouldn't uh, re-roll any of these. Uh, we can do a harvest action to take all of these. We can keep this for yet another future round and maybe set ourselves up for a really big trade action that might actually um, get down to exhausting a lot of these uh, victory points from the game. So yeah, let's hold on to that. Let's do another harvest. We will explore. And we still have these two tents, so that means we can guarantee that we will control wherever we explore. All right, it looks like we are all done rolling, so we can now go into the action phase, and the red player is going to start that off, and they're just going to harvest for a single gold, which they will add into their area. Next up, we have the black player over here, and they are also going to harvest, and in this case, it's going to be one wood and one pumpkin. Well, we can now go, and I figure let's just go along with the crowd. We were going to harvest anyway, so we can grab a gold, a pumpkin, and a wood, and add those into our area. And now Red can take their second action, and it looks like they're going to do research. But they're going to use both of these right here, as well as two Pioneer Hats as a wild icon. So that's going to be a third research. And when they pair those three along with the one they always get, that is four research. Now technically they only get this once per turn, which is why this is double-sided. So you can flip this over to show that they can't use it again. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it face off like this. I think I'll be able to remember. Now we can see here that this requires four, and they do have presence in the uh, orange and green areas, and this is why they had to go ahead and harvest uh, using a whole action to grab this gold. They have to spend this gold, and now they can put this token right over here, and that's going to be worth five points by itself, and then every one of the dice that they have at the end of the game will be worth one more point. So that was actually a gigantic amount of points they just got with this action. 
All right, the black player can now take their second action, and it looks like they're going to do an explore, and they get to pull up two tiles. So they'll grab these two right here, and it looks like, oh, these are both just really big victory point tiles. Uh, one of them is six and zero, and the other one is six and one. Uh, well, there's not a huge difference between the two, but they figure they'll go with the six and zero to uh, potentially give less points to their opponents. That's, of course, assuming they get to maintain control of this tile. Next up, they do have to place this down onto the map, and they would really like to avoid placing it next to us. Uh, they're starting to get worried about the amount of points we are accruing, but it doesn't look like they can do that. We are very well spread out at this point. So they figure they're not going to put this down next to both of their opponents, so they're going to put it right over here. It seems like we've uh, kind of accidentally formed a bit of a, a brown tile area, uh, so we can slide that in just like this. Black can now bring a cube in from their general supply, and we can now optionally bring a cube down onto the spot here. Well, we currently have two tents, so we could put one of them down onto here, but as you can see, the second place is zero points, and we know that the black player has access to raid icons in the future rounds anyway, and if we put one down, then they could put another one down, and then they would be quite close, actually, by using a raid action to putting one of their houses down, and it looks like they already have two of their houses on the board. So I don't think we actually, I don't think it actually makes sense to put one of these tents down. We'll go ahead and keep these, and maybe we can kind of surge in there later on with a big uh, settle action to try and take it away from them. But for now, let's not go in. All right, we can now take the final action of the round, and we are also going to draw two tiles and explore with one of them. So we're going to take these two right here, and it is worth noting that we only have four tiles left over in the stack. If at the end of the round we have no more tiles here at all, then that will uh, initiate the end game, and we will only play one more round. So we're getting a little bit close there. Uh, now let's look at our options. This one right here is orange. It is four points for the controller and zero points for second place. And the bonus here is the person who explores this gets to gain one die of uh, a color that they have access to. This other one here is four and two points, and it is an interesting factory. So the way this one works is you can pull a tent off of this zone to activate this factory, and then in another territory, you can uh, remove three of your tents to put your house down. So that effectively means you just need to have three tents on a tile. You don't need to have three more tents than the person who has the second most tents. And I think this is pretty volatile. Uh, if we put this out, then the red player could potentially use that to go ahead and take this away from us. Um, I guess, likewise, we could use this to take this away from the red player. But either way, I think I like the idea of putting this tile down. Uh, it gives no benefits to anybody who decides to tag along, and it gets us another die. So now we have to figure out where we want to put it. And I figure we'll put it right over there. We can now take a tent from our general supply and put it onto that spot. The black player has the option of jumping in over here, and they're going to pass. Next up, we do get the bonus of this tile, and that means we can take any one of the dice that we currently have access to, and I think let's grab another one of these brown dice right here. With that, all of our actions are now done, so we can now do cleanup. It looks like everybody has just one die left over, so we can now pass this over, and now would be the time that we would refresh our tokens over here to make sure that we are only doing things once per round. You can also use these tokens to show that you've used one of these uh, factories once per round, but so far I don't think we've had a problem with that. All right, we can now go into the roll phase for the next turn. And once again, the uh, dice quotas have not gone up. Uh, I don't think I've been paying as much attention to that as some other things. Uh, maybe these players should be, because obviously rolling more dice is a good thing, but there are a lot of different things to pay attention to. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do our own area, and we can see that we get to pull five dice out. Well, it looks like we are going to start things off by pulling this one brown die out. We need four more dice, so we can put all six of these in here. And then, let's see, we got, looks like an orange, a yellow, a green, and a white. We can now go ahead and roll all of these. And right off the bat, I like the look of some of this. Uh, this is going to be a second trade symbol, and we can use that uh, over here to try and get a couple good trades going on. Uh, it appears that we have two sets of three of a kind by using all of these gold uh, uh, pieces right here. So that is definitely something we want to do. We also got a couple of these hats, and those can be uh, settle actions. And we have these two over here, which we aren't really using. I guess uh, we could also use these to go ahead and reroll or set some other dice. But I figure let's just keep these, and we'll likely use them as settle icons because we do have that large coach's technology. All right, let's now move into the action phase now that everybody is done rolling. And it looks like the black player is going to start off by doing a settle action. 
Now they have these two subtle icons here, but they continue to tie for this tile right here with us. Uh, we've been very friendly so far. Actually, all of us have been, had a couple of friendly ties going on throughout the game. But either way, this is going to give them three subtle actions. And with the first of these, they're going to simply take one tent from their general supply and add it into their personal supply. They did already have one in their personal supply. And then with the second and third subtle action, they're going to put one over here and one over there. After doing this, they have decided to do two governance actions. We can see that they are all by themselves with three tents right here. So that's going to put this down there, and they're going to do it up here as well. Now, both of these locations were factories with really nice abilities, but this is also the third and fourth of the uh, houses that have been put out by the black player. That essentially means they were at two houses, which was uh, two times two or four points. And now they are at four houses, which is four times four or 16 points. So with this move, they did generate 10 points. And of course, they locked in the first player, uh, the first place points on both of these tiles. We are now next, and I think let's go ahead and do a trade action. We've been setting this up for a couple turns. We have two of these actions, and we can see right here that uh, that will be essentially three wood because the gold is a wild resource, and then this one will be three pumpkins with the gold as a wild resource. Now, once again, whenever you do three matching, you're going to get six points for each set, so that means by getting rid of all of this stuff, we just made 12 victory points. When we look at the current pool, that is going to actually leave 12 more points left behind. So this is another one of the endgame triggers. It seems like a couple of them are coming really close. In fact, uh, if all 12 of these are gone at the end of a round, then that will end the game. Uh, we can also see the black player has just one more house, which is also a trigger. We already talked about there only being four more tiles left uh, in the exploration stack. And the final one of those are these dice right here. Uh, now, it looks like we're not threatening to end the game from this, but uh, I think one of the other ones will make it happen probably pretty soon here. Okay, it's now the red player's turn, and they are going to go ahead and do a four-level settle action. We can see that they currently have four tents in their area, and it looks like they're going to start off by putting one tent in this spot. Then their second settle action will put a tent over here. For their third settle action, they'll put another tent into that location there. And it looks like for the fourth one, they're simply going to bring another tent out from their general supply. Well, the black player can now go again, but they don't like the look of what just happened over there because they can see that the red player has a raid icon over here. But at the moment, the black player can't really do anything about it. So instead, they are just going to do this activation, and it looks like they are also going to do two trade actions. When we come down to their area, we can see they have a pile of resources. They don't actually have any gold, but it doesn't really matter because they were still able to make uh, two sets of three identical resources. So just like us, that means they're going to grab 12 victory points. Well, when we come back and look at the pool of victory points, we can see there are exactly 12 left over. So that means we have now pulled every single one of them out. And that also means that one of the endgame triggers has happened. Now, we're technically going to check this at the end of the round. And we always do one more round. But we now know that this is the second to last round of the game. Well, with that in mind, we can now take our second action. And I have a couple different options. Uh, we could use both of these as settle actions because we do have the large coaches technology. We could also use these both as pioneers to make them a wild die face to do a single exploration from the top of the deck. We could also use these as a wild uh, die face to make another research. And there is a research that we could grab right now that would get us three victory points. But I think that the thing that probably makes the most sense is to settle. We've got these two here, and we are still gaining the access to this one over there. And with that, uh, we can see we still have two of these tents in our area. We could use one of those to bring a third one over. And then the other two, we can go ahead and put them down right over here. Now, this might seem a little bit silly um, because this is only a one-point tile. But by doing this, we now have three more than the next opponent. So we can get rid of all of these as a free governance action to put our third house down. That means we went from two houses, which is four points, to three houses, which is worth nine points. So we've effectively gone up five for the houses. And uh, I guess we still had that one there, but still a five-point turn. And we have just a single tent left over, which we could potentially use on the last round of the game. Okay, the red player can now take the final action of the round, and it's no surprise to see them do this raid right here. They kind of set it up on their last action, and they're going to raid this tile because they have at least one tent in this area. And then for each raid symbol, that means they can remove one, from, uh, one tent from a single one of their opponents, and then they can replace it with a tent from their own supply. 
So they can put this right over here, and this is going to go back to the black player's personal supply. And now for a governance action, they have three more than the next opponent, so they can get rid of all three of these to the general supply, and that's going to put their second house down. Now, obviously, the second house is worth four points, and the first house by itself is worth one. So they gained three points for that, and they have locked in the six points for controlling this tile. With that, the action round is now done, so we can now go into cleanup. It looks like both of our opponents have a single die, but we have two. Now, I figure let's go ahead and keep this recruit action for the next round and uh, put this one into the spent area. We can then move the starting player token over to us, and we can now officially state that one of the endgame triggers has happened because, once again, we have no victory points in our pool left over. This means we are going to play this one last round, and uh, for this round, we can go ahead and dump the rest of the victory point tokens in here, so we still have access to gain more points. That was just a threshold for ending the game. With that, we can now go into this final round of the game, and it looks like, once again, we are all rolling five dice, so that has not changed in a while, and let's go ahead and see how it goes for us. It looks like we currently have two dice in our bag, so we do have to pull three more, and we've got quite a few right here to play with. So let's go ahead and jumble that up, and let's grab three more. It looks like it's green, an orange, and a brown. All right, let's see what we get. Well, to start things off, we did get a couple of these Pioneer hats and a couple metal. I figure let's use one of these metal in order to pull two more dice out of our bag. I believe that is going to be all of our dice right here, so we can roll those. And now that we look at these, I think we're not going to worry too much about these resources. Let's go ahead and I think use this um, metal resource icon here, and that lets us set one of these other dice. And I think exploration is probably going to be somewhat important this last round. Let's keep this one, of course, and maybe, well, this one is a Pioneer hat, so we could use it to change something else. But if we look over here, we can see that there is no exploration on, uh, see, any of the dice that we have, uh, the orange, the green, or the yellow. So I think we have to turn this into an explore if we want to make our exploration any more powerful. And we now have a couple more options, I suppose, over here for our second action. Well, I think the other thing that we should probably focus on is just going to be settling. Uh, this can act as a settler, so let's go ahead and use this pumpkin, and we can turn this recruit action into a settle action, so that's effectively two here, plus maybe a third from the tile that's out on the board if we are still tied for control of it. All right, with that, we are now done with our roll phase. Okay, both of our opponents are now done rolling, so that means we can start this thing off, and we are going to do two explorations. That means we can draw the top two tiles here, and it looks like these are not that impressive. Uh, this one has no points on it, but it does give extra dice quota, but you don't get any points for that at the end of the game. So let's go ahead and place this tile down, and we can see that the red player currently has no tents in their personal supply. So we'll put this right over here. We can now put a tent from our area down on top of it, and we are going to generate one pumpkin, although I don't think that's going to end up mattering for us. Next up, we have the red player, and it looks like they are going to do a settle action with all three of these. Uh, this Pioneer activates because of their large coach's technology, and with the first of these settle actions, they're just going to pull some of these tents back. Uh, we can see over here that we put a house down, and there are zero points for being in second place. So they can pull both of these off for that one action. They can also pull this away. Uh, that's going to cause their dice quota to go down, but they really don't care about that. And now they're going to use their other two settle actions in order to put two of these tents down. The other one will go back to their personal supply. And one of them will go over here. Uh, there was currently no second place person, and the second place gets three points at the end of the game. And they'll put this other one right over here where second place generates one point. We can now move on to the black player, and they are simply going to do a single research technology learning action. With this, they are going to learn large coaches just like the rest of us, and it looks like they are mostly doing this for the two points. Now, I just realized that I've never discussed these other two technologies. Uh, it looks like we just didn't bump into them as we were playing the game. Uh, this gold rush right here simply says that gold icons on your dice when you roll them can be a wild icon if you want, which would be certainly nice if you were rolling a lot of dice that make gold. We could have probably done some pretty good things with this one. Uh, the other one over here says mobile workforce, and it lets you activate a factory from one tile over. You could remove a tent from an adjacent tile instead of the one with it. Uh, that is pretty powerful as well, but it just didn't seem to come up in this game as being a good move for any of us. Next up, we now get to go again, and this is our final action of the game. 
we can see we have two settle icons right here. Uh, this one because of the large coaches. And we still get this one right here because we are sharing with the black player. Now with that, we essentially have three settle actions. And we do have this one uh, tent in our personal area. I think the first one that we get from over here will just pull a tent out from the general supply into our personal supply. And then with these two here, I figure let's just go ahead and put them right over here. And then we can do a governance action. We can see that we have three more than anybody else. So we can put our fourth house down, which means we essentially went from nine points to 16 points. So a seven point gain by putting this here. And these are going to go back to our general supply. And that is our last action of the game. So we can now go over to the red player, and it looks like they have three options. They could do some research, they could raid, or they could do a double explore, and this is the one they've decided to do. Now they do have the scouting technology, which means they always explore at plus one, so they would get to draw three tiles, but there are only two tiles left over. Uh, so they're going to look at both of these, and this is going to be a pretty easy decision for them. Uh, this one is eight points and four points, and this one is one and zero. So they definitely want to go after getting as many points as they can in here, and they're going to put this right down over there. Uh, they know that we aren't going to take any more actions, so they're trying to put this as far away from the black player as they can. Now once this goes down, they do get to put a tent onto that spot right there, and we could join in for four extra points, but we currently have no tents in our uh, personal supply. We did not set ourselves up to be flexible like that, and we're kind of kicking ourselves now because of that. This means we are now down to the black player's final action. They have just one tent in their personal supply, and they have uh, these three settle icons, but they also have this pioneer hat, which now counts as a settle icon for them because they finally got the large coaches uh, technology. So that means they have one, two, three, four, five settle actions available to themselves. So this is probably going to be a pretty good turn for them. For the first settle action, they are going to pull tents back. Uh, they've decided to grab this one here, that one, this one here, and they're pretty happy with that because now they have four more settle actions and they have four tents in their personal supply that they can spend. It looks like the first three of these that they're going to do are going to be really simple. They're just going to place them all right down on top of this spot here. Uh, they now have, it looks like, five, and we have two, so they do have three more than we do, but they do have to finish out this action before they do the governance action. So with this final uh, tent right here, they're looking to see where they can get the most points, and it seems like that is probably going to be right down here, because once they go here, they're going to tie for second place. The settle action is now done, and this means they can now put out their fifth and final house. Uh, that means all of these are going to go away. They can slot this in right there, and they just went from four houses, which was going to be 16 points, to five houses, which is 25 points, because again, you take that number and you square it. So with that, they have now finished their action, and that means that the game is now over. We can now go into final scoring, and we have a nice little pad here to track all those. The first thing that we're going to see is all of the points we get for our control of these different territories. We can start off with ourselves, and we can see right here we are going to get four points. Uh, we're going to get three points for this spot. It looks like we are going to get zero points for there. Uh, we'll get one point here. Uh, we'll get one point there because we do tie for control. This will be one point for second place. And then over here we get three points for controlling this and nine points for controlling that tile. All told, that is going to be 21 points for us. Next up, we have the red player. They're going to get six points for this spot here, three points for being in second place there, uh, one point for second place here. Then this will be three points for controlling it. Then it looks like they will get five points for tying for second place here, and then eight points for controlling this spot. Lastly, they do get one point for tying the control over here as well. All told, that is 27 points for them. And now we have the black player. Now it looks like they have four points for controlling this spot. They are going to get one point for controlling that tile there. Uh, this tile will get them three points. They are tied for second place here, so that is going to be five points for them. And then five points for this spot here. And lastly, three points for controlling that tile. And all told, they get 21 points as well. Next up, we can gather our victory points for the technologies that we learned. We can see that it looks like only the red player really went hard on technologies. We only got one for the entire game, and that was this large coaches. It definitely was a good one for us, but it's only going to generate us two victory points. So we can add that right over here. Next up, we can see that the red player did several of these. This will get them zero points. This will get them one point. Uh, they will get two points for here, 
four points for this one, and then this is the big one. They are going to get five points just for the technology, and then another one point for every die that they have. Well, they currently have nine dice, so that means all told, they're going to get 21 points for technology. So that is a very big gap between the two of us. Uh, lastly, we have the black player, and they only picked up two technologies. This one is worth zero points, and this one is worth two points. So they are going to get two for that. Moving on, we can now grab three points for every two dice that we have. And it looks like we have eight. Red has nine, and black has eight. Now we are going to round it down, so that means we all effectively have four pairs, and four times three is 12, so that means we get 12 points down the board for our dice. Next up, we can gain points for our houses that we've built out onto the territories. We can see that we built one, two, three, four, so that is going to be four times four, or 16 points. The red player was only able to get two out, so that is going to be two times two, or four points. And lastly, the black player got all five of those out, so that's five times five, or 25 points. The last thing we have to add up are the points that we got throughout the game for trading. Over here, it looks like we got 21 points as we were playing the game. The red player only grabbed six. And lastly, the black player was able to pick up 12. And when we add up all of these scores together, it was an incredibly close game, and it looks like we have 72 points, red has 70, and black also has 72, so we have a tie, and there is no tiebreaker in this game, so that means we have now finished this game with a tie for first, and a very close second, and that will complete one full three-player game of Dice Settlers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I was definitely trying to show the different players going after different strategies as we were playing the game. Uh, it was probably pretty obvious that the red player was going really hard on the technology cards, and uh, we were trying to make a bit of a harvesting and trading engine go, and that is obvious by the fact that we had so many victory points in our pool at the end of the game versus uh, our opponents. Now, it was pretty cool to see that the scores were so tight there at the end. I was quite surprised to see a straight tie all the way through, so we didn't actually technically win the game, but tying for uh, first place is certainly a nice thing to see. Now, overall, I think the video did a pretty good job of showing the different stuff that you could do. I tried to make smart decisions as we were playing, but I was also trying to show you the different uh, ways that the game felt and the different uh, corners of the design that you could play into. And uh, I am a bit bummed that I kind of uh, misunderstood the rule for doing the uh, house placement. Uh, you only have to remove three cubes instead of all of your cubes from that spot. And I do think that it's likely that this playthrough would have ended probably with us winning if we hadn't done that, because there were a couple turns there where I removed uh, several more cubes than I should have when we put a house down. And having those cubes out there means um, you're vying better for uh, control over the tiles. And also you can just, for one subtle action, suck all of those uh, cubes back and then be much more efficient with uh, reaching out and settling even more. But overall, uh, little mistakes are going to happen with every one of these videos, and I am pretty happy with how this one uh, went. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap up everything I have to say about it. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support these videos, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.